child's maternal grandmother. She was awarded temporary custody and we're on for review of that placement. We conducted the review hearing virtually over the internet using Zoom. And in addition to the court, the temporary custodian, Ms. Trustee, is here. The child is not on the screen, but she said she was with her, so I assume she's there somewhere. The, she is. Ms. Trustee's attorney, Ms. Evans Battle, is here. And the attorney and guardian a lot of appointed for the minor child, Ms. Miller, is here. Ms. Trustee, if you and um, Kaylin, uh, Kaylin, get where I can see her. Kaylin, uh, he wants to see you. you. I just want both of you to raise your right hand so I can see you taking the oath. We gotta take the oath. She's got to see you in here in this picture with me. Help me do this. I don't know what you want. Come on, come, right come, get in the camera. Stop get pushing in, me. Get in the camera. Can you see her? No, I'm no, having no. issues with this camera. <laughs> do each of you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony and evidence you're given this matter would be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Do each of you? Yes. Yes. You've got to speak up. They're recording this. I'm waiting for you to say yes. Yes. Thank you. Take your hands down now, please. All right, Ms. Trustee, um, since I saw you last in this case of the review hearing in May of 2023, right out a year ago, has um, have you been in any trouble with the law, arrested, put on probation or parole or anything? No, sir. Has defects been out to check on how you're taking care of Kaylin or any other minor child in your care since I no, saw sir. you? Good. All right. <laughs> Does Kaylin have any medical issues that require regular medication by prescription or regular visits to the doctor? No, sir. So she's generally healthy? Yes, sir. Anything with your health that would prevent you from continuing to take care of her? No, sir. What grade is she in? Seventh. Is she passing? Yes, sir. Well, barely. <laughs> she's barely okay. passing, but she's passing. All right. Does she have any discipline problems at school? Sometimes. Does she have any discipline problems in your home? Sometimes. What is your choice of discipline? To take her phone away. All right. Gravel driveway with the front and rear wheels of your car do wonders. For getting people's attention. <laughs> Get my drift. I'll be in the house. All right. You have. She has a brother. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, so she has a half brother. And with whom does he live? With his mother. And how old is he? Um, sixteen. Does she get to see him or talk to him? No, sir. Are they close? Or were they close? No sir. no, sir. How about her dad? She hasn't seen him in a year. Did she talk to him? No. Does he call? No, sir. <laughs> Does she call him? No, nope. personally, I have him blocked. So. She says she has him blocked. I don't want to talk to him. She don't want to talk to him. Okay. What kind of problems, Kaylin, have you had at school, discipline-wise? What have you gotten in trouble for? I don't know. Beg your pardon? <laughs> Tell me your phone, your headphones. Tell him. Talk to the judge. I don't like talking. She gets in trouble with her phone and her headphones being in her ears. Okay, it's well, not I even my phone, it's just my headphones. I'm never on my phone in class. But okay. Well, I would be willing to bet there's a rule that you don't wear your headphones in class either. <laughs> right? You got an answer. I don't, I don't just say yes, sir. Just say yes, sir. What's your favorite subject in school? Science. What's your least favorite subject in school? I don't know, all of them. <laughs> well, you just told me your favorite, so you can't be all of them. Most of them. I don't like most of them. Well, the last time you got written up or got in trouble at school, what was it for? I don't even remember. I've never been written up. Nothing I've gotten in trouble for has been that serious. 
well, why was your grandmother just telling me about your problem with the earphones? You didn't get written up for that? No, because it's not that serious. Well, if you get reprimanded orally by a teacher, even if it doesn't get written up, if it takes time away from teaching to do something about something you're not supposed to do and you're breaking the rules, that's serious enough for me to want to know about it. So, was that the last time you got in trouble was about your headphones? Mm -hmm. Yes. Sir. I got to hear you and you got to speak up and say yes, yes or no. Yes. No. How many times this school year have you gotten in trouble for bad attitude? I don't know. More than twice? Probably only twice. Okay. Have you been sent to the principal's office? Yes. For what? Headphones. Are you in any extracurricular activities at school? I guess. You're banned in chorus. Ma'am, I, I, I want her to answer. I don't want you to tell her what to say, please. It'd be one thing if she was four, but she's 13. <laughs> What are the extracurricular activities you're engaged in at school? Band. Hey, Ma'am? Mm -hmm. What did you say? I'm sorry. Yeah. He didn't understand you. Okay. What was the activity you just told me about? Caitlin, answer him. I don't... You said band. Tell him again. Okay. I... Was the activity banned? Yes. I don't know what, what you mean. I want you to answer the questions. It's not real hard. Oh, you're getting too close to me. Stop. What instrument do you play? Baritone. Baritone sax? No. I beg your pardon? You said no. So if it's not a saxophone, what is it? It's a baritone. It's an euphonium. It's an E flat what? It's It's a smaller version of the tuba. And it's just called a baritone. I'm sorry, I just I've never heard of that as an instrument, so I'm learning something. So it's a small tuba? Mm hmm Yes. Any other activities at school besides band? Chorus, but I'm not doing that next year, so it doesn't matter. Is the band a marching band or concert yes, band yes. or both? Marching? Uh, I'm going to be doing marching band next year. At what school? Okay. You like living in Jackson? I guess. Anything else you want me to know about you and living with your grandparents? Nope. Are you happy living with your grandparents? Yep. Right, Ms. Miller, do you have any questions? No, sir. Ms. Um, Evans Battle, do you have any questions? No, sir, Judge. Ms. Trusty, are you happy having your granddaughter live with you? Yes, sir. Are you spoiling her? Always. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to leave things like they are and come back in two years. With the okay. And are you still at? All right. Ms. Miller, if you could draw a short order that we've reviewed it and everything remains appropriate and it should continue and it's set out for two years 
Uh, tell me the date, uh, Robin. May 12th. May 26th at 2 p.m. May 12th, 26th at 2 p.m. live. Yes, sir. I'll prepare it. Thank you. Good luck in school, finishing up the year. What are you going to do this summer, Kaylin? She walked off. She doesn't have patience on Zoom meetings. <laughs> Hang on, sir. You got something wrong more than just not having patience. <laughs> Kaylin, the judge wants you. She's here now. What is your um, What are your summer plans? I don't know. You got are you band going camp. to any summer camps? Are you? I have um, band camp. That's it. You have I band camp. camp. What about reading? You got your summer reading list out no. yet? The school probably has it posted on the internet. I don't think our school does that. Well, you can always look at Henry County has a summer reading list online for all their students. You can always I, borrow that. I don't like they have reading by grade that. level. Do what? I don't like reading like that. What do you like? What reading do you like? I don't know. I don't really read. I listen to music. Okay. Well, the summer is about two and a half months. Um, are there things around the house that you can help with? Or do you Not live yet. on a farm? Do you live on a farm? No. Okay. I just hear a lot of, I guess there's a dog's barking. I just heard animals. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, my dog won't hush. That's why no, we were I, out. I just, <laughs> does the grass need cutting at the house? I don't do that. <laughs> what do you know. do? I don't know. You have a list of chores that you do for the household? No, I do my own chores in my own room. You clean your room? I have a yeah. All right. Y'all have a good summer. Take care. Thank you. Substitute Thank you. placement. <laughs> the child with Shunda Brownlee. Okay. We had continued. Yes. For our defects investigation and to give mom time housing. Mm -hmm. Let's get right here. Oh. Mm -hmm. Both of us here. In the hearing virtually using Zoom. The attorney and guardian allowed him for the child, Ms. Schrock. Defects personnel, Ms. Finn. Ms. Howard. Six. Is that Ms. Nene Harris and the child, Alani? Yes. All right. And then I've got an iPhone 32. Is that Ms. Brownlee? Yes. All right. Ms. Schrock, tell me um, where we are in relation. <laughs> yes, sir. Mom's progress of and um, the status of any further effects was supposed to on her housing when she got it. Um, they'd already knew that the drug screens were clear. And yes, they reported sir. her criminal history, which didn't appear to be anything real recent. Mm -mm. Go ahead, Ms. Schrock. Yes, sir. Um, Alani has actually been residing um, with her with her mother, uh, Ms. Harris, since approximately March. Um, she has remained in her current school. She's been riding the bus to and from school um, to um, the current custodian's home, to Miss Brownlee's home. And then the mother has been picking her up at the bus stop and taking her to school in the morning. So um, she has not yet changed schools, but she has um, been residing in, in, with the mother since about March. And um, I've been in contact with DFAX. Um, DFAX reported that they did determine that the mother's home was appropriate for the child. 
as the court already stated, they um, also confirmed that there were no concerns with her drug screen results um, and reported to me that they had identified no issues that would make the, the mother's home unsuitable for the child. Um, the child and Miss Brownlee have um, not been having any contact since the child left Miss Brownlee's home back in March, um, either face to face or phone. There, there's been no contact between the two of them. Miss um, Brownlee reports to me that she still is maintaining her request to relinquish custody of Alani. She reports that she has no concerns with the mother's ability to care for the child and um, is not objecting to a transfer of custody or I don't know if it'd be a transfer, but for, to the mother of the child. Um, obviously, the mother is still um, wanting custody of the child and she reports that things are going well. The child also, um, Alani herself, also reports that things are going well in her mother's care. Um, she's happy there. Um, her needs are being met by her mother. She's also in the home now with her two siblings, a brother and a sister. And um, so she's happy to be um, in the home with her siblings. She does understand that she'll have to change schools over the summer and she'll be enrolled in Henry County, um, Henry County High School. Um, and she is um, satisfied with with doing that. So um, all the parties are, are all in agreement, including the child um, for custody to be returned to the mother at this time. And like I said, there's been no concerns identified either by myself or by DFOX. And you're recommending that? Ice? Yes, sir. Does, well, does anybody dispute anything that Ms. Rock has just told me? So I don't no. hear anybody disputing it. So that means everybody agrees. Yes. The department agrees. Call Paul agrees that. Yes. The yes. Relative custody. Award I the modified award to Ms. Brown to be terminated to facilitate reunification with the mother, and uh, which by operation of law goes back to her. As, as the legal custodian who lost custody in the uh, dependency case back in 2000 that started in 2009. I don't know. Your Honor, you're breaking up so hard to say. Well, uh, then I'm in good because all of y'all have broken up at least. <laughs> and um, I don't know what the deal is with our con connection. Why? Unless there's, I know it was raining when I went to lunch. I don't know that it was storming or in terms of lightning or anything. But can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yes. So, D Fax is on board with letting the child go back to the legal custody of the mother. Yes, sir. Mr. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. With them going. I didn't hear you. Yes. Okay. Ms. Brownlee, you're on board? Yes. All right. He didn't hear me. Yes. Ms. Schrock, you draft an order just basically restating what you just told me. Hear me, Ms. Schrock? Yes, sir, I will. Okay. I hope the rest of my hearings today they don't go like this. All right. Well, thank you all for your time and cooperation with DFACS doing their investigation. And Elani, good luck to you. Changing high schools. You'll be right down here in the middle of McDonough. <laughs> brand new school. Well, it was brand new. <laughs> Years ago, I guess. But it's, I think it's the newest high school in the county, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Hello. 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 Um, can you all hear me? We can. Oh, hi, Judge. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. Tell me your name again. I thought I wrote it in my file, but I don't. 
Well, I'm the new case manager for them. My name is Stacy Peterson. I'm the adoption case manager. But you, didn't you come in front of us for something else here recently? I, not recently, no, sir. Ever? I've been I've been before you with a uh, a child you'll never forget, Shatorka. Don't don't forget, <laughs> oh, yes. She she she's been with me for how many years, Stacy? In in Spalding and what we did back then. Yes, 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 yes. A she's long time. Good. She's good at what she does. Thank you, sir. Well, did Shatorka sign out of care? She was adopted. Remember, she got adopted by that family that was her fig that was her godparents. And we got her adopted like a week or two before she turned 18. That's right. That's right. It she worked out great. It really did. Is she the one that was over in Augusta in the lighthouse? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. It was. Went on for 20 minutes complaining about why that wasn't fit and she needed another placement. And <laughs> she complained yeah. about every placement she went to. Exactly. That was her. <laughs> Pending adoption. And... Mr. Bowles, have y'all finalized the adoption? I assume if you had, you, we wouldn't be here. So, <laughs> I, I think that's an accurate assumption, Judge. the uh, The finish line is in sight on that. Finally, um, no, think, don't don't ruin my waning days as judge. But you don't <laughs> tell me that. I was I was hoping for maybe just a couple of weeks before he turned eighteen. Um, <laughs> no, um, no, we've uh, we're actually very close to getting a final date on that. Um, the uh, the biological father was uh, kind enough to uh, violate his probation, so I was able to go see him at the jail. Um, he's about to go to a rehab facility. Not that that matters, but um, I was able to go see him. He acknowledged service. I had him sign everything that he needed to sign. Uh, the mother has signed termination of parental rights. Um, and as far as the legal father goes, um, we are in our last week of service by publication on that. Uh, we've submitted putative father, uh, judge Amaro required that we made some amendments to the petition with some, uh, some different information and to satisfy some, some statutory requirements in the pleadings we've done. So. Um, so we're, we're happily, we're right at the finish line on that. Finally. Good. Um, well, my calendar says, um, judicial review in lieu of panel, but Levi's not in foster care. So we, we wouldn't be having a traditional review. I mean, we'd have a review as to why permanency hadn't been achieved. Right. But, um, cause I have a, ch I went and found my, ch I'm in a different courtroom and I had to go find my, my six months review checklist. And I don't think I have to use it with him. I, I don't think you do either judge. I, I think it's more of a, a, like you say, post, uh, you don't status have to use report. it with him. Yes. Status report more than anything else. Yeah. Well, let me, before we get too far, let me let's see. We got Miss Peterson already introduced herself, the caseworker, for the um I assume you're working on the other four Witten children's adoption. Yes, sir. And uh let's see, Miss Kathy is from Mr. Overman's office, defects lawyer. Mr. Overman is here. Mr. Bowles represents the Hoffmans in the adoption of Levi, and Ms. Miller is all five children's guardian at light of attorney. And Ms. Hoffman, the foster mom to the four pending um, their being able to be adopted. And um, she's a temporary custodian of Levi until he can be adopted. So she's here. If y'all, uh, Ms. Peterson and Ms. Hoffman, if y'all raise your right hands to take an oath. Great. Thank you. We just had another hearing and we had the worst connection. Nobody could hear anybody half the time. And I don't see it detect any problem this time. I'm wondering what was going on. We were with some people. Two of the people were outside in their front yard or somewhere. I don't know if that made any difference. But they came, kept claiming they couldn't hear me, that I was going in and out. And 
We haven't had those technical problems in a long time. Are y'all having any problems hearing me? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Anybody have any questions since Mr. Bowles got us started dealing with Levi? Anybody have any questions for Ms. Huffman or for Ms. Mr. Bowles about the status of Levi's adoption? We no, don't, sir. We're familiar with it, and it sounds like Judge Amara is going to get things in order, and uh, probably we won't have to come back for you, even though you may want to come back for the hearing. We'll see. And Ms. Hoffman, Levi's doing well in your home? Yes, sir. And you promised me day one that you would not spoil that child. Well, all five of them are rotten. Well, the older ones are doing okay in school. Did they have a good school year? Uh, Caden's struggling a little bit in some of his classes, but um, Michael's on AB honor roll, and Brooklyn just had her awards yesterday and got six awards. So, right. Mike, uh, Caden's struggling in language, which she pulled it up a little bit in math. By language, you're talking about foreign language or English uh, language then, arts? Yeah, ELA. Okay. okay. He's more of a hands-on guy. He's doing great in his ag and his construction classes. Okay. So that's the okay. pathway I think he's going to take next year for I'm junior. Say, maybe that's that. Maybe that's his calling. Listen, people in the construction business, they can, they can command their price. Mm -hmm. Either and if people don't want to pay it, they'll find somebody cheaper. But if they do, they have get a reputation as a skilled. Um, in that field, mm -hmm. they get a lot of business. I mean, people are building houses. People are buying houses. All right. Let's 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 hear about Mr. Overman. Judge, instead of me proffering today, uh, since Ms. Peterson's here and got everything, I'll just let her give a short synopsis of what's going on. And then if anybody has any questions, I think that will be great because I don't that think there's much fine. going on, if that's okay. Ms. Peterson? Uh, you're under oath. Could you tell us how the other kids are doing or what's going on with the status of all this? Um, yes, sir. Um, as you all just heard from uh, Attorney Bowles, um, you know, we're waiting on, you know, for e Eli Levi's uh, adoption process to be completed or at least, uh, you know, uh, at the point to where we can have all the paperwork submitted at one time. Um, the family requests that all the children be adopted at the same time, or at least Levi be adopted first. And so that's what we're doing. We're complying with that. Um, the children's paperwork, as far as them being released, has already taken place, meaning we've already signed the children into adoption status. So as soon as, you know, uh, Attorney Bowles is, is ready to move to the next step, we've already done our part and everything can be submitted together and hopefully the children can be adopted on the same day at the same time or Levi will be adopted first and then the other four children will be adopted after them um, as we comply with what the Hoffmans would desire. The children are doing well. All four of them are doing great. They're great children. They're smart, um, smart in different ways, you know, um, uh, uh, health wise, they're doing fine. Uh, they're, they're as far as going to the dentist, they're up to date on their dental appointments. Um, they're they're going to therapy. Um, the, the three oldest have therapy. Uh, she speaks highly of them in regards to, you know, how well they're doing and them actually participating in the therapy sessions. Um, the children love Mr. and Mrs. Hoffman. Um, they are bonded to them, attached to them, and they want to be adopted by them. So um, everything's great with the placement. Everything's great with the children. Good. Thank you. Yes, sir. Anybody have any questions for Ms. Peterson? Yeah, just a clarification. Uh, Stacy, what's what's going on is all our paperwork, I think you said, has been submitted. So there's no reason, I don't think, why the children can't be adopted at the same time. Is that correct? And, right. As far as our part is concerned, as long as, you know, Henry County and the judge, you know, puts them all on the same court calendar and date, you know, then we're going to be great. And I'll, yeah. ask, I'll ask Mr. Bowles, is there any issue with that, you think, James? That's what I was about to say. I'm I'm happy to help facilitate and accommodate that. Okay, good. And I'll talk. Is this a Judge Amara's case? Is it not? It is. I, I don't mind reaching out to Judge Amara as well. So I think Thank we you. can make that happen. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. So he got both of them. He what? got the four. The he got the foursome and the individual, the youngest one. 
I can only speak to the to the youngest one. I he's got the youngest one. Well, have they filed the petition on the four yet? No, she she's got the attorney hasn't filed the petition on them. She just has the um the paperwork. Everything's been they've been released, and so she's she was waiting to talk to attorney Bowles so that okay. they can at the same time so the children could either be adopted together or Levi could be adopted first. So they're okay. working together. The attorney. Okay. And, uh, okay. Yes, so, yes. so that that's actually, so I am still working with Ms. Schrock on that. Yes, sir. Okay. I got you. I was, I was wondering, I was like, do I need to work with Ms. Peterson now? No, no it's, attorney Schrock, it's, a, it's attorney Schrock. And, you know, I know you and her have already spoken and she's, she's set to work with you as soon as you tell her, you know, that you've gotten everything done on your part and everything can be submitted. Fantastic. Yes, sir. Thank you, Judge. That's all we have, I think. This all, right. all adopted on the same date. Ma'am? I want all of them done on the same date. Okay. Well, keep in mind, uh, the judge that they get assigned to is the judge who decides how he wants to hear them, and your lawyers can ask him. But since they weren't filed at the same time, uh, and it, ought to be, it ought to be doable. But I, I don't think your lawyers can guarantee that. Um, but um, anyway, I hope that I hope it will work out. That would be a nice gesture to be able to do it all at the same time. Right, it would. But y'all, when when she gets ready um, to file, she needs to give the clerk notice that this is related to another case, so that they will give it to Judge Amaro. Otherwise, it will go to one of the other. It may go to one of the other three judges. Yes, if you, she's aware. Yes, sir, she's aware. Okay. All right. Well, Mr. Overman, if you'll do me an order about the post TPR review and Ms. Miller, I don't remember us doing a, an order last time on Levi since he's not in foster care. Did we do a review order the last time we did this? I don't think so. I don't um, think I did one. I well, don't do think one for did. me then. Then you'll feel better about it. <laughs> Just you want me to do one on Levi? Yeah, just, you know, that it came on for review of his status, that he's, uh, his adoption case is pending and is expected to be finalized shortly. And he's doing well in the it, with his temporary custodians and the, everyone's looking forward to the adoption. Okay. All right. You can, um, we'll put the... Um, post TPR review it back out six months. I was going to put it out 90 days, but since y'all are going to be juggling to get for to get the wit the four kids to catch up with Levi, who's almost at the finish line, then I put it out further. So because y'all may end up um needing that extra time. That'll be fine, Judge. So give me a day, uh Robin for six months out for um we'll just review both of them at the same time. It's the easiest. And judge, if the adoption has taken place on all five kids, then we're going to just write me a letter telling me they were adopted and we'll close the files and uh, show a permanency has been achieved. Okay. And can't and we'll cancel the hearing. Okay. Perfect. Problem. And I just for information purposes, Judge, I did notice on my screen that a lot of times the pictures would freeze uh, at different times along the way. When somebody was testifying, it sounded like the sound did well, but the pictures ended up freezing some of the time. They so were saying know. that I was freezing in the last hearing, but I guess I can't see it freezing, but I haven't seen any of y'all freezing. Not that I'm looking at you all the time, because I'm not. I'm looking down at the file and stuff. But Right. Um, so you said I've been freezing since we've been in here? You Is have my picture looked. frozen? You haven't froze, but some of the other people have. Oh, okay. I don't know what's going on. You'd think as fewer and fewer people are on Zoom, it would it it would lessen the load, and there'd be less crap happening. But but I don't know. The ladies keep insisting that I do Zoom, and uh, they, I understand they refuse to switch to live hearings. That must be the reason. I can tell. It has nothing to do with the judge. Yeah. Jessica's just the most adamant. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've I've just I've found a number of um uh, roofing tax 
underneath my car tires in the parking lot, and I've wondered where they came from. I don't know. Maybe maybe some analysis need to be done for fingerprints on those. Mm -hmm. November 19 at 2 o'clock. Y'all want to meet on Zoom? Make Robin's Day? That'll, that'll be fine, Judge. I don't think we'll have to have a hearing, hopefully. Okay. Well, thank y'all. Thanks, Judge. When, when will you be back in your courtroom? Not this week, because I, I talked to the guys uh, right after lunch, and um, they said they were trying to get through by Friday. Okay. <laughs> so Great. I... I they got like six guys in there. God, I don't know. There's really not room for any more in there but between the equipment. Yeah. Junk and the reason I asked was because I know tomorrow you have set the hearing for uh, the change of placement for Lyles. At the same time, Judge Brown has uh, four hearings, three or four. I've two with Jonathan because I'm not I can't be there, but I'll be on the Zoom with you. I did not know where that was going to take place, whether the Zoom would take place somewhere else. We can do it. It's going to be somewhere in this building, but I don't know where. Yeah. I mean, Judge Brown, but Judge Brown is still going to have his courtroom. He's going to still be doing court at nine. I think he's. Patty had it figured out and you'll have to ask her. I don't really know. Okay. <laughs> she told Ooh. me, but Robin may know because she came through here and told me, but I don't remember what she said. Um, Robin needs some clarification too. Okay. So we, we're not able, but if you're on Zoom at the pony time, I, Jessica figured out if y'all didn't run your mouths that we could finish and not mess with Judge Brown's calendar because he had a private, he had some kind of case that would not involve y'all that while you're doing mine, then he could do that and then he would be free to see y'all. Okay. Because Jonathan will be covering his hearings, the two he's got, and then I'm yeah. going to be on Zoom. So I'll just log on at nine and see how we're doing. Okay. Uh, uh, Ann, are you on them all? No, I'm on that private one, but that private one's not going to take but two minutes. Okay. And then I'm going to stay over and do the two with Jonathan. And then Matias is going to be in Judge Veal. So I've got to go report to Judge Roberts. And Alyssa's going to come over and do Judge Brown for me. Okay. I knew it's going to be a a lot of moving around because Matias told him and told me that he had to go to Veal first. I said that was fine that Jonathan, we had the Zoom and then Jonathan's going to do those two. So he'd have plenty of time to get back, I think. Yeah. I've got um, my Thursday. I couldn't do it on Thursday because of Superior Court's the reach and um, the TPOs. And then Friday, I'm not going to be here. So, okay. I, um, well, I, listen, I noticed your, uh, I'm, I read it very quickly, but your, um, notice the placement change didn't say who they were moving the children to. Right. And what uh, is, is procedurally, if Ann and you could stay on after we finish this, Mr. Bowles and Ms. Hoffman's not involved in this, we okay. could discuss procedurally. I just wanted to make sure, not facts of the case, but make sure we're on the same page before, particularly if Ann's going to be over next door. I'm not, I'm not on Lyle. That's Alyssa's case. Okay. Well, that's right. It is Alyssa's case. But I, I, if we, you and I could talk, Judge, not not ex parte, it's just about procedural. I want to make sure we're on the same page when we do this. Okay. Thank you. Thank y'all, Ms. Hoffman. Thank you for all your work. Thanks, James. Be in touch. Tell the kids, hey, I haven't gotten to see them in a while. I probably won't even recognize them. No, I got a picture of them. You want to see a picture of them? Sure. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Wow. Getting big, yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah. Well, where is one? Is one missing? No, she's right here on the corner. <laughs> oh, I couldn't see. Oh, I couldn't see. He didn't want to take a picture. That's nice. <laughs> All right, thank, thank y'all. Sure. Thank y'all. Have a good Thanks. one. Thanks. All right. Luck with the adoption adjudication. Thank you. Y'all take care. Thank Order you. Entered in judgment. Placing temporary custody of the children with Ms. Lamar and approving a reunification case plan for the mother, Carrie Lamar. And the mother, there she is. She's moved around on my screen. 
Um, the petitioner is here. The petitioner's attorney, Ms. Bandong, is here. And uh, the guardian at Lyon attorney for the children, Ms. Rock, is in court somewhere. She is, Judge. She's over at Superior Court, so I'm filling in. And so Ms. Miller is acting as attorney and guardian at Lyon for the children. Are the children there with you, Ms. Lamar? Yes. Um, yes. Okay. All right. Ms. Miller, I'm going to let you lead the uh, solicitation of information that I need to determine if the if the case if the placement remains appropriate and if her mom has progressed on her case plan. Well, Judge, this is a last minute minute fill in for Ms. Schrock, so I'll do as well as I can. Um, she she has the file with her because she took it to Superior Court, so I'm just going off some things that she had texted me. Um, Lyric is eight and Amelia is six. And of course you already said that they were placed with maternal grandmother, Miss Lamar. Uh, you, were, you were last in court on November 14th, 2023, where um, a case plan was set up. Um, the proposed reunification case plan for Miss um, Carrie Lamar, who the mother is, she was to complete a certified substance abuse assessment and successfully complete any and all recommended education. I'm going to have to ask Miss Lamar if she's done that and supplied that information to the court. No, I haven't um, went through something after we, the last time we had court, and honestly, I've just been working. I've been looking okay. for substance abuse classes down here, but they don't have any, and I offer any that's down here, because I'm right now I'm not mobile. Okay. I, walk, I either walk or catch an Uber to work. Okay. Judge number two is that the mother was going to submit to random drug screens, both urine and hair follicle, as requested by either DFAX, the court, or the guardian, and demonstrate being drug-free for a minimum period of six months. And I'm going to have to ask you, Mom, have you done that as far as the case plan was concerned? I haven't submitted any uh, drug screens, but I haven't been smoking or drinking or anything like that, no. Okay. There are drugs uh, that you use that don't require drinking or smoking. Have you used any drugs that you weren't uh, in possession of a prescription from a doctor to take? No. Okay. okay, number three, the mother was to complete a parenting education course with the provider approved by the court or the guardian. Um, Ms. Lamar, were you able to take the um, parenting education course? I went to the health department to see if they had any classes like that. They referred me to people, but the people never got, got back to me. I've been leaving messages and everything. I haven't okay. been able to find a class. Like I say, I, I work, I'm back working now, so I mainly work in the morning and don't get out to like in the evening. Where are you working? Um, at McDonald's, 2081. Before we go through the rest of your case plan, Ms. Lamar, let me ask you. Somebody needs to mute the mic where the, the background noise is. And I, Is that where you are, Ms. Carrie Lamar? No, that's not me. It's my mom. Oh, okay. Um, that, that was the girls. I apologize. That was the girls. <laughs> Ms. Terry Lamar, um, before we go through the rest of the case plans, uh, the top two about the drug use and the drug uh, ev evaluation all are very important. Um, you say you're working, it sounds like you're working a lot. Um, are you, do you contend that you're in a position for the kids to come live home with you now? No, not right now, because right now I rent a room. Okay, so you you don't have housing right now. Even if you had some of these other things done, you don't have a place for them to come live with you. No, not okay? yet. Okay, and that's don't don't be embarrassed or anything. I mean, that's just that happens. In fact, I had another case earlier today, the exact same situation where they love their kids, they want to see their kids, they'd love for them to be there, but they know they're not. They don't have the physical things that they need so that they can make a house out of it, a home. So um, let me ask you this: Are you visiting your children? since uh, we were here in November. Do you have a regular time that they come over to your house or you go to your mom's and see them over there? Again, I'm not mobile. I don't have a transportation. I call them as much as I can when I'm not working. But no, I haven't okay. seen them. When you say mo when you're not mobile, you're not disabled. You mean you don't have a vehicle of your yeah, own that you can get in and go where you want to go? Yes. And Uber gets expensive. And I and you're having to take Uber to work now? Or I walk, yes. Are you... How far is your is the McDonald's you're working at from where you live? Uh, if I walk, it's 46 minutes. If I get an Uber, it's like five minutes. Did you say 46 or 26? 46 if I walk. So it's almost an hour. Goodness. Do you live closer to another McDonald's that they'd let you transfer to? No, this is the closest one I live to. Okay. Uh, are you still at 366 Simpson Street, McDonough? 
No, I'm not. not like I said, the last time we spoke, last time we spoke, uh, the person I was staying with at 366, we got into it, and I ended up at the Haven House, and now I'm at, I rented a room from a lady who was referred to me from the Haven House. Or, I don't need her name, but can you give me the address? Where you Do you get mail at that home? No, I get mail at my uncle's house. Okay. McDonough? Yes, sir. Is it McDonough? Okay. Yes, sir. And you say you want to get mail at your uncle's house. Uh, what address is that? Uh, 120. Tell me about, um, do you stay in touch with Christopher Kimball, Lyric's no. dad? No, and he was not, he's not the dad. The DNA came back. He's not the father. Okay. Oh, well, he, was that you, Miss? Um, that was me, Ella. <laughs> okay. I'm looking down at a piece of paper and I hear female voices and I can't always tell them apart. Um, so he had a DNA test and he's not the father. I don't, did defects do that? Yes, they did. It was in the last the first time we were in court. You did have it in your paperwork because you did say reference to it. Okay. Well, then that's why I don't have a named father for Carrie. Uh, excuse me, for, uh, for Amelia. There is not one name for him. Wow. Okay. Do you have a, a game plan, Miss Carrie, about um, when you'll be able to get your own housing? Are you trying well, to do it as of right now? I'm taking. I say as of right now, I'm taking it one day at a time. Okay. I'm saving. I'm saving my money as much as I can. Okay. Have you got any outstanding criminal charges that you have to go to court about? No. I'm sorry. Okay. Are you on probation or parole to any court for anything? No. Okay. That's good. All right. How long have you been at the job with McDonald's? It's going on two months. Two months? Yes. Okay. That's good. You like it? Yes, I do. Good. Um, well, that's that, good. That's, Judge, that's that's correct. She hasn't been there for two months. Denise, you've only been there a little over a month. It's going on two months. I started April 12th. It's going on two months. Okay, it's April twelfth. You're, 12. you're in your good. second month. That's it. She's in her second month. All right. Um, now let's talk about go back to talk about your visits. You say because you're you don't have transportation, you get there when you can. Do you see your kids in person, face to face, at least once a week? No. Do you see them face to face at least once a month? No. Uh, you have the capability to do Zoom with us in court. Can you do Zoom? And your mother has the ability to do Zoom with us. Can you do Zoom with your kids? I've asked her to put it on their tablet. She hasn't yet. She says she forgot to. Ms. Lamar, is there any reason oh. you can't put it on? No, I didn't. She just told me, well, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, but, it doesn't matter. Um, but it's, what, listen to my question. Is there any reason you can't put it on whatever device you have and make the kids available so they can see each other. Oh, definitely. I, I'm always available. They're always available. I don't keep her from them, and she knows that. Well, do you know where she lives? Well, I haven't been there yet. I've, I've been, when she was at the Haven House, we were in contact. But do you know where the address is? You, this address she just gave us? On, I have an idea. Idea. Yeah, I have an idea where it is. She pretty much told How me where. How far is it from your house? How far is it I'm from in, your I'm house? in Stockbridge. It's not, but maybe about 20 minutes away. Maybe you're 30. Still at 144? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Well, could you um, take the kids to see her or go get her to bring her down to your house to see the kids? Yes. She's had access to come here anytime, but she chose, she's, even when she had a car, she chose not to. Well, I wanted to be able to I, Zoom is better than nothing, but obviously yeah. face to face is the best. And I'm trying to figure out how we can help her since she doesn't have transportation right now. Um, and I, I understand that Uber will eat up your whole paycheck and then some. Um, so you have to be selective about using it. I, I gather you and your mom are not on the best of terms. Is that safe to say? Mm -hmm. Well, can you, for the sake of keeping quality relationship with your kids, and part of that, from my experience, is staying in touch. Um, can you put aside, and and if your mother has any problems, that she put her her hers aside so that you can spend some time with your kids if it means her coming and bringing them uh, to spend the, some some time at your place it sounds like there's not a lot of place for y'all to even sit around and visit if all you have is a room but i mean it's 
uh, would you be okay with you? Do you work on the weekends? Yes. Do you have a set day off or does it change every pay period? Um, as of right now, it's been Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Sometimes they call me in to come work on my off days. Okay. Well, these during the summer, I get, unless the kids are in summer school, then you it shouldn't matter during the school. That's a problem in terms of during the day, but it can still be in the evening. Um, could you pick her up and bring her to your house for a visit, Ms. Lamar? Um, yes, I could, but they are actually going to be in summer school. They go every year. Um, they're doing very well in school. They just, in Henry County, um, the school system now offers the summer school program at their school and they do go, but, um, and I work, but I have no problem with, I have no problem with her seeing, picking her up and having her see them. I've never had a problem with that. Okay. The only problem I ever had was her taking her, taking them to a place that I knew was not safe for her or them. Well, that was I, I, wanted, I wanted to get reacclimated with spending time with them around your house and then mm -hmm. Maybe later when she we can meet somewhere in the community and they can spend time and then go to and at some time when she gets her own place and you've been there and visited and she can take the kids there. That's it. mm -hmm. It's not going to all happen overnight, but um, I, we set this out for six months based on um, mom being optimistic about finding a place and it didn't quite work out. But th those things happen. Don't get disappointed about it. Um, but I do want you to work on some live visits. And when you're not able to get meet up, that you visit with them at least weekly on Zoom. Okay? All right. Give me a date six months out, uh, Robin. Is that You think that's going to give you enough time to be on your feet? Or you, I can give you whatever time. you. I can give you nine months. I can give you 12 months. Let's do nine. Okay. Make it nine months. Um. Judge, I, I do have a question because um, the, the things that that concern has always concerned me with Carrie is her emotional and mental state. And she she's not complying to any of the things that she's been asked to do. And that is why I think that she's make the makes the choices that she makes. Is because she she needs this help. She needs that help. Well, and that can affect the children. Go ahead and finish. No, I was saying, and that and that in turn affects the children, the parenting classes. Um, that she needs anger management. Um, she has not done any of that. Well, I, I'd like for you to tell me where she can get those things. She has no money to pay for it. She said she went to places trying to find it and didn't find it. Uh, the court has no funds to pay for people like this to get these kind of treatments. And unless there's a provider out there giving it for free, um, I do. it doesn't happen. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, that's unfortunate. And I don't agree with it, but that's the fact of life. Um, and she went out and looked for places that had it. And she said she didn't find any. I don't know if there are any. Or I, um, Ms. Miller, if you would ask Ms. Schrock to to let, uh, if she knows of any providers in the community that afford either give a sliding scale, uh, sliding scale for uh, services or a um, free would be better. Um, but, sure, uh, I'll let her know. Your Honor, also, um, Carrie, Carrie does have insurance. She has health insurance that will cover some of this cost. Well, some some health insurance carriers provide some, and some their mental health treatment is next to none. But uh, who is your health insurance with? It's with is Peach State, Lamar. It's through Peach State. Well, I don't know who. Yeah, I know of them. I just don't know what they provide. Um, do you have a contact person, a, a toll-free number or something that you can call and say, do you have a provider in the Henry County area that does um, parenting classes or um, does drug and alcohol assessments and treatment or anger management classes. I can give them a call and see if oh. they have a list. Okay. Okay. I'm not so sure that they do these, those things, but you can find out and um, okay. All right. 
All right. Anything else we need to address? Ask Ms. Um, Lamar, ask the kids if they have anything they want to tell me. Well, silly. Okay. You remember this? this lyric. What is this all yes. over your face? Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Do y'all want? <laughs> I'm sorry. They're playing makeup. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't know they were playing makeup, but um, I can't see yeah, you. Yeah, you have anything else you want to say to this judge? Uh, hello. Hey. Hello. Did you, I remember did you, you. Go to school today. I'm good. Huh? Thank you. Did, did you go to school today? Yes. Sounds like y'all been playing all day. Stop. Stop. Yeah. Mommy. Hey. 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 Hey, to mom. Hi, mommy. Now we all we're going to I'm and, and your grandma are going to figure out how y'all can at least talk on Zoom like we're talking right now. OK. OK. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Be like being on television. No. Ow. Bend up. Bend up. All right. I remember her. You remember her, too. Yes. <laughs> Anybody yeah. have questions for the it's children? That. She muted her. Thank you. Hello, sir. Good. It's good to see both of you. You're looking like you're ready for the summer. You got lots of energy. <laughs> Always. Uh, I'm not ready for summer school, though. <laughs> I am. I am. Okay. I am. I'm not going to summer school. I'm saying here with you. Grandma said y'all love school and you have to go to summer school, that you love it. They do. <laughs> Amelia is on a honor roll and Lyric. Is a B on a roll. They love school. Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> and guess what level hey, hey, wait, what? Huh? And guess what reading level I'm on? What? Okay, wait. I'm on M. I'm on a K. Okay. I'm on M. All right, get down. Y'all got anything else to say? No. Goodbye. Bye bye. Okay. Bye, young ladies. Bye, bye. mommy. Bye, kids. Bye, mommy. Bye, baby. Bye. 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 What's okay. Monique? Monique Ms. Bye, Monique. bye, Miss Monique. Okay. Bye, girls. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Gary. Okay. All right. Thank you, <laughs> Miss Bandong. If you, from your connections where you work, if you don't know of any providers in this area that supply those type of services, to um, um so I don't, don't know any person requirements. Go ahead. Oh, um, I, I don't know any personally, Judge, but we do have um, a couple navigators of the program, so I can definitely look into that. Okay, thank you. All right, Ms. Miller, did you have any questions? Or Ms. Mandong, did you have any questions for either Grandma or Mom? No, sir. No, Judge. Thank you. All right. Well, the court date, as per my boss, is February the 11th at 1 o'clock, and... Um, I'll schedule that on Zoom since mom's transportation issues may still be with us. Um, if y'all agree to put it back, put it to a live hearing, just let the clerk know. Okay. I'm ready. Good luck, mom. I'm glad you've, you've got your job that you like. That's a good sign. Um, you probably would like to be paid a little more money, but if you're doing a good job, a little bit of money will come along in raises again, but um, it's going to take you a while to save up some money and uh, to make your move. So you have your own place, but um, don't push yourself too hard and don't beat up on yourself because you're not where you want to be yet. Okay. It takes okay. a while. I want you to see your kids. Okay. Mom, your mom says she will work with you to put them on Zoom. And she said she could help some to come get you or to hook y'all up where you can spend some time. Maybe meet um, at a McDonald's or at a, you know, there's, you know, the summer, the weather is nice. Meet at a park. Uh, maybe when they get out of uh, school, maybe they could meet on the day that you're off school, off work. Maybe you could meet at a park and spend like from four to six or seven or something and have a picnic or something. All okay. Right. Just, those are just suggestions, but you, um, communication will mean a lot to talk about it. 
Okay? Okay. All right. Good luck. Y'all take care. Ms. Miller, would you give me a, just a short order that we reviewed and that we need more time on the reunification sure. plan? Sure. All right. Take care. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. But I can't see my list of people in the call. So three of you are going to have to just sign off so I'll, I can I'll, I'll, I'll see get all of you. I'll sign off as well. <laughs> Well, I saw where um, Bryce is still at RYDC. Where's Blake? Is he with us? A judicial review hearing in lieu of a citizens review panel for um, these children being back in foster care. Came back into care in August of 22. We're conducting this hearing virtually over Zoom. And we have a bunch of people. Ms. Schrock, the attorney and guardian to Lila for the children, for young men. Uh, Kathy from um, Mr. Overman's office. Mr. Overman, the attorney for the DFACS. Uh, Ms. Dewadu from CASA. But you're... Did you assign a CASA or did we assign a CASA for this case? Your I Honor, see Mr. Not, not for this case, but we have a new class. And so they're um, observing court. We have two oh, cases. Okay. okay. I just, I, I didn't think we'd assign them one to this case. Let's, let's see. We've got a bunch of folks from DFACS. Ms. Lampkin, Ms. Long. Sorry, but I've got somebody named Scrawl. I don't know. What is your, your name? Your Honor, that's one of my um, volunteers. Stephanie, you need to put Casa. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, it looks like we've got three Casas as well as Lisa. Is that right, Lisa? That's right. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And Ms. Evans' battle is the... <coughs> The attorney for um, the adoptive mother, Wanda Cavender. Uh, Ms. Brinson is the attorney for birth mom, Randy. Wanda, turn, turn your camera back on for me, Ms. Cavend Ms. Cavender. Um, I saw you earlier, and I think I've caught, and the mom is here with somebody in the picture with you michael phillips randy who mr phillips was he with you last time i don't remember um yes sir you had spoke to him in court did i yes sir you see how good my memory is don't you <laughs> are y'all in a relationship yes they're together judge do you live together? Do you live yes. together? Yes, sir. I may have known this. You may have told me this at the last hearing, but I don't remember without asking you again. <laughs> they are, Judge, and Mr. Phillips is actually working on a case plan, too, so that's why. Okay, good. We've got an iPhone as well as somebody else. Well, the iPhone is one of the young men with... Um, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Where are you calling from? Um, Georgia Baptist. All right. You like it there? Yes, sir. That is Blake, Judge, I think. Do they like you there? Yes. Mm -hmm. We do. <laughs> Good. Well, there were two that signed on. I don't know where they went. That was one of them, I think, was the iPhone is blank. It is, Judge. Somebody who's still connecting to the audio that I don't think is going to connect in our lifetime. 
I'm going to put her right back in the waiting room in the back and see if that helps the connection. Um, Ms. Lampkin and Ms. Fallon and Mr. Phillips yes, sir. and Blake and Ms. Cavender. There you are back on the picture. Thanks for turning on your camera. All of you that I just named, raise your right hands to take an oath. Mr. Overman and or the case manager, Ms. Lampkin, are going to tell me what has transpired since the last time we were here. And then Ms. Lampkin will be subject to rigorous cross-examination. <laughs> and then the other attorneys will get a bite at her. And then we will go around and from the parents, Ms. Cavender, and um, the kids. I guess the uh, Bryson is at RYDC. Well, he is, yeah. on the report I got. So I he guess they're not going to put him on the Zoom. I've got used to get, uh, they used to be the best at getting people on Zoom, and then they refused. So I guess they're still refusing. Your Honor, what, I understand there's been a recent change in. Um, his placement. I, I think he's in uh, Dalton now. Um, I, I'm wondering if um, now the, the report that, that was received May the 9th said he was in Conyers RYDC. Okay. Um, he, but they do move them around sometimes for overcrowdedness or for different other reasons. It's kind of weird that he would be uh, in an RYDC and earning privileges. Usually that's just a temporary detention facility. I, you don't generally go there for, at least I didn't know you went for long-term programming. And, and Josh, he, had, maybe I he has had issues and that's why I think he's there. I may be wrong, but I'll he ask him have, about that. He may have new charges and that may be why. He's that's there. correct. All right. And if it's okay, Judge, you, I'll proffer you, what report. Ms. Brinson, just a second before we, Ms. Brinson, did you have something else you wanted to tell me about his placement. Uh, I no, I mean we, we um, we've just learned that um, that he moves, um, and not not many details about um, what happened or why. But I think it was just a few days ago, um, and so that's all. And I've well, not gotten to Miss Lampkin yet. Yeah, I'll, we'll get to Miss Lampkin, Judge, and she can probably straighten that out. But thank you, Rachel. All right, all right, go ahead. Okay, Judge, the court report that we submitted uh, to everybody. Uh, says that he was in Conyers YDC. He's been there since January. He he can't leave campus yet. Uh, he's had visits there, phone calls with the great grandmother and the mother. His behavior has gotten extremely worse over the time period. He's tried to flood the facility, spit on staff, starting yeah. fights, destroying property, all kinds of things. Uh, he has therapy there uh, and working on a DBT intervention for impulse, anger, uh, control, and anger. He has a lot of issues right now. Bryson, Bryson uh, reported uh, to the mental health uh, counselor that he was, uh, been, I think there's an investigation been opened up recently. He reported his, to, to his great grandmother and mother that they knew about it, but told him not to say anything. CPS report was made on 5-9. The agency's working to schedule the forensic for him right now. So there are a lot of issues going on with Bryson. Blake uh, it has begun oh. experiencing behavioral issues shortly after returning from visits with his mother and grandmother. That creates a, a problem. For, you know, the staff reported they've noticed a pattern with Blake in which he struggles to listen and follow directions shortly after he returns from the visits with his mother and grandmother. He's urinated in his bed, uh, around his room, pooped in the bed, smeared it, bathroom since it, visiting with his at, at the home. Uh, he meets with his therapist weekly to discuss emotional management and respond to anger and how to communicate. She reported that Blake re regressed last month, reporting last month, and he is guarded and resistant to talk. He doesn't want to talk to the therapist about it. It was reported to the case manager that uh, the transporter was not watching him and helping him when he visited the house. And she was outside in her car, so we took steps there uh, uh, and asked uh, we've changed transporters and now he's been transported from uh, for the transporters from family ties. So we've addressed that, I think. Uh, they both uh, attend individual therapy 
uh, with Ms. Jones at New Heights Weekly. The family has uh, family therapy with Ms. Williams from Family Ties. They are meeting and participating in the sessions. Both therapists report the sessions are going well. Damn, Miss. How old is the lady? Brandon, I'm sorry. Brandy reported that she is currently a uh, security guard. Uh, case manager had asked for check stubs showing she's working. She hadn't received them yet. Mr. Phillips has uh, completed a substance abuse assessment in March and has therapy with family ties in needs uh, with Ms. Holland. She reports that she has not been able to reach Mr. Phillips. Uh, she's tried calling, texting, and leaving voicemails. So uh, the drug screens that we have from February, March, and April shows positive for marijuana every time, uh, two for February, two for March, uh, urine and hair. April showed a urine uh, positive for marijuana, and then April 24th, it showed negative. Mr. Phillips shows positive for marijuana every time. We've got February 10th, February 24th, March 23rd, March 25th. The 23rd was a hair follicle. All the rest are urines. April 13th and April 17th, all positive for marijuana. I've got a whole list of the uh, medication for Bryson and Blake, which is extensive, and it's in the report, and I would proffer that instead of going through the list. Uh, they came into care, 8-26-22. The adoptive mom is not able to take care of them due to their behaviors, their health, and their age. Uh, we did a diligent search that's been reported. Uh, Bryson's placement, of course, we show YDC. I'll ask Mr. Ham Ms. Uh, Lampkin about that. Uh, Blake, of course, is at Georgia Baptist. Uh, so uh, as far as their history, uh, the EPDST was completed for Blake on 1-2, Bryson on 1-5. Dental was last completed for Blake and Bryson on 222 and 105. CCFA was done. Uh, that's his ancient history. Bryson uh, attends, of course, YD, RYDC. He was at Cousins Middle. And Blake, of course, is at Georgia Baptist, taking care of that. Uh, so Blake has therapy with Miss Ashley. Bryson has therapy at YDC. Visitation. Blake has visits with Miss Cavender and Brandy biweekly in a public place. Bryson has visits on campus with his mother and great grandmother. Uh, our recommendation is to continue to work with the adoptive mother and biological mother toward reunification while providing services to the children in foster care. That is my report of what we got and it's submitted to the court and the attorneys. And then I'd ask the court to make it a, a part of the record. Ms. Lapkin, is the information I, I uh, proffered to and correct to the best of your knowledge? Yes, sir, it is. Okay, let's talk about the uh, possibility. Has, has Bryson moved to another YDC? Are you aware of that? Yes, sir. He okay, had, tell us tell us about that. Um, Bryson was involved of, of an accident where um he went right. by another um peer there in RYDC. Um, and then we was notified the after about a day and a half, okay. um, in which he was already moved. Nobody called or emailed or said anything to myself or DJJ. Um, we just received um a call when he was already on his way to um, Dalton. And DJ, DJJ moved him, is that right, because of that, as far as you know? Um, no, sir. After speaking with DJJ, it wasn't DJJ, it was the facility. Okay. The facility took it upon itself. Did they notify DJJ, I assume? Um, no, sir, they didn't. I was the one that called trying to figure out who, you know, signed or gave the consent for him to be moved. Right. But you haven't found anything out about that? Um, no, sir. Okay. So he was moved uh, by the facility to another facility. Is that your understanding? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, other than that, everything in the report correct as far as you know? Yes, sir. Let's talk about uh, Bryson and visits or whatnot. Does the department, st are we still doing visits, court-ordered visits twice uh, a month, I think, or however often it is, even though Bryson has exhibited, uh, excuse me, Blake has exhibited these behaviors? Um, well, we we did start the visits with him um, having um, a fake three to four hours um, one weekend with the grandmother without the mom. And then the next visit would be those visits um, 
Bryce Blake has told myself that the transporter had left him alone for a period of time. Right. Um, he has told the therapist as well that he has seen mom at those visits. Um, so the with the transporter, we did change. I did change the trans transporter and got a new transporter in so we can keep our eye um, on Blake while he's there at the visits at the home. OK, but that's taken place. And how many visits have we had the new visits with the new transporter involved or have we start just started that? No, sir. We have had um, at least two visits with the new transporter in place. And how often do they visit? Um, twice a month, once in the home and once in public. OK. And is this I think you may have said it, but you cut out on mine, maybe not with the judge. Uh once and once, like you're talking about, uh, did uh, is this uh, strike that based on the visits? Are we still continuing those visits? Um, I, I, I do want Blake to see his um his mom, his grandmother. I have no problem with that, but it is a concern of myself and the agency with him. Um, after starting those home visits, um, yearning. Every you know in the bed on the floor as well as with the, fe the feces and playing it and spearing it, it is a concern of the agency. Okay, and but Georgia Baptist right now is still keeping him. That is correct, and okay. working with him. Okay, and I think the report said let's talk about the therapy for Blake. Is he? I think it said he is not wanting to open up with a therapist because of this or not. Um, that is correct. Okay, of course the he agency does not, he does not address any trauma. Um, or answer any questions that's been asked um, of him. Okay. Has this continued even with the new transporter keeping an eye on him in the home? Um, I have not heard anything from the last meeting that I had with them in the beginning of this month. Um, I was actually going to do a visit to find out if they're still having it. But I, for, for as, not, as of now, I have not heard anything different. Okay. Okay. Anything else you'd like to tell the court concerning uh, Bryson or Blake at this time? No, sir. Okay. Are the visits, as your understanding is, the visits are going okay as such? Yes, sir. Okay. Just when he gets back is the issue. Yes, sir. Let's talk about Bryson. They visit at the RYDC? They was having visits at the RYDC in Congress. Yes, sir. Okay. But do you, you don't know of any since you just found out about any visits uh, with the, the facility up in Dalton. Is that correct? Oh, no, sir. They haven't had any visits there. He was just moved um, for his knowledge on Friday. Okay. But uh, that would have to be something worked out as far as with YDC since they moved him, whether they're going to allow visits up there. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, good. But the department doesn't have any objection to them visiting at the facility if the facility says it's okay. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, and let's talk about case plans, what mom has done. I've reported about Mr. Uh, Phillips doesn't seem to, hasn't really done much as far as they, they haven't had the therapy sessions, et cetera, due to issues he has had. Is that correct? Um, that is correct. I did reach out to Miss Brandy um, and finally got a chance to talk with her. She said she was having some phone um, issues um, that they, he did get in touch with the therapist so I don't know how many sessions that they have, but I think they have spoken once. Okay. But uh, we're, we're encouraging them as far as a case plan to go through the therapy and see what we can do. Is that correct? Yes, sir, it is. Okay. And as far as the case plan is concerned and who to work with, uh, is still a reunification case plan with mom. Is that correct? Uh, with the adoptive mother. Adoptive mother. Right. Yes, sir. And of course, uh, what's the status of that? Um, right now, they are still um, in the individual therapy as well as the family therapy um, okay. and the parenting. Okay. And uh, what about Ms. Cavender? Um, Ms. Cavender has been participating um, with no, no issues or problems at all. Okay. Good. All right. Anything else you'd like to tell the court before you're questioned by other day attorneys? No, sir. Okay. That's all I have, Judge. Does anybody object to the report that he referenced several times being admitted into evidence for this review hearing? I do. No objection. No, sir. Did the first person say, I do? I do. That was 
the motion Brand for Andy Fallon to do. That's Miss Fallon, Judge. Okay, well, you're represented by Ms. Fallon. In as, much as, in as much as my client um, objects, then yes, we object to the admission of the court report. What's your objection, Ms. Fallon? Um, that um, um, did not have it, so um, I guess that that will be part of that objection that um, I did not uh, receive it before and did not have um, the opportunity to thoroughly review it, um, discuss it with Ms. Uh, Fallon. Um, and I think that we had some um, concerns about the accuracy of the report. All right. Objections overruled. It's submitted for what value, if any, of the court deems appropriate. You can address that. Your Concerns about what it said, if you want to give me your version of it when your client testifies. So I can. Anybody have any questions for Ms. Lampkin? Do you... I, I do, Judge. Go ahead. Ms. Lampkin, um, based on the questioning of uh, Mr. Overman, um, the grandmother, the adopted mother, uh, has completed all the terms and conditions related uh, to her case plan at this time. Is that correct? That is not correct. She has not completed the case plan. She needs to complete can, can you Tell me what exactly she has not completed. She, she has not completed anything. She's um, in the process of completing individual parenting and family sessions. Okay, so the individual counseling sessions has to be totally completed she doesn't, she would not be in a position where she could be participating in individual counseling after the case plan. Is that? Oh, no, ma'am. She would need to complete it. Okay. And what does completion look like? Um, from speaking with Ms. Alexis Jones, um, she said that it, it would be some, some more sessions, could be about a month and a half for um, them to actually complete. Okay. And did she indicate that uh, a reason for why she thinks that there is additional time that is needed? Um, well, she's actually going through a curriculum with them um, and they will need to complete that curriculum. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And what about um, and family therapy? Because that involves all the, that involves everyone in the family, including uh, Brandy and Mr. Phillips and the children, correct? Um, everybody except for Bryson. Okay. And when will he be brought in to? Well, well, right now, Bryson is, um, do not want to participate in family therapy. Um, I have asked him, um, several times on several occasions, but he does not want to participate in family therapy at this time. I got a question. Okay. Don't interrupt. And, um, once they're completing the, what is the anticipate, what are they anticipating as far as the family therapy goes about how long is that expecting to take? Um, I spoke with Ms. Williams today and she, she did not give me um, a length or a time of completion. Okay. Is that something that could be ongoing after say the children are, would be returned or one or more of the children are returned? Um, yes, it, it would possibly be a, a part of um, aftercare. Okay. And as far as Mrs. Cavender is concerned, though, she's completed the uh, parental fitness. She's followed the recommendations, which include the individual and family counseling. Correct. Correct. Did you say she's following? Yes. Yes, yeah, she's following it. Yes. Yeah. Right. And the psychological, I don't think she had a psychological. But um, so and as far as visitation goes, she's participated in as many visits as were allowed. Correct. That is correct. And at this time, I know when we were back here, it seems like in December and February, we were looking at unsupervised visitation uh, for her. And where are we at with that setup? Um, at this moment, um, with the information that we receive from Blake himself, um, as information he gave to the therapist, that um, we're not looking at that at the moment. We'll continue to have somebody there to monitor due to his behaviors um, with the urine and then the feces and planting the feces. That is a concern of the agency. But he hasn't made any allegations of anything that occurred during the time that he's with them. 
correct? Can you ask me again, please? Has he made any allegations um, in reference to Ms. Cavender um, while he's been in the home or in her care? No, ma'am, there has not been any allegations. And so the basis of his not being able to have unsupervised visits at this mm -hmm. time is because, uh, because of his behavior after he returns to the facility. Does anybody know who Sarah Morris is? I have somebody in the waiting room who's very late. Anybody She's from the Baptist Church. What? She's from the, um, the facility where Blake is at. Oh, okay. And so the reason why he cannot have unsupervised visits is because of his behavior after he returns to Georgia Baptist. Judge, I think Hello? that's been an answer, ask and answer. I didn't hear her. She, the judge interrupted her to ask that question. She didn't respond. Go at ahead. this answer. time, at this time, with him, the, the urinating and the feces and planting the feces, that is a problem. Okay, that's all I have for her. Did you yes. um, so far, I have all visits with um, between Ma or Brandy Fallon and um, let's start with Blake. Um, have all of those vis visits been supervised? The, the visits has been supervised that she have with Blake. OK. Um, and what about Bryson? Bryson, they have someone there at the facility that oversees those visits. All right. So. Um, during all these supervised visits, um, has any of the supervisors, have any of the supervisors alerted the department to any um, concerning behavior uh, that's occurring during the visits? Um, no, ma'am. Okay. Um, and let's see. Who is it that is reporting um, that Blake's behavior is tied to or is related to um, his visits with, specifically with Ms. Fallon, um, that, who is it that is reporting the pattern um, that they are? Um, his his therapist is, um, the therapist, the school principal, um, the director of morning staff um, has all been reporting the behaviors that they see from him throughout today. Okay, and um, let's see. So the report says that staff no reported that they'd noticed a pattern. Um, do you do you know specifically who that staff is that noticed a pattern um, upon Blake's return? The school, the school principal, the therapist, the director of morning staff has all been reporting. I had a meeting with them reporting the same things that they're seeing from Blake once he has started going home to having those visits with Ms. Cavender. Upon his return, everybody's reporting that the same thing. Okay. Is the therapist addressing uh, those concerns? She is. She's trying to get Blake to talk um, and to communicate as well as he has a CSI um, worker, Miss McAhaney, that's trying to get him to open up and talk about the why. Okay. Specifically from Miss um, Fallon, what... Um, What period of um, income data or employment history are you looking for? Um, I asked for check stubs. Mm -hmm. um, that would be our proof of employment. Okay. So you're just looking to prove that she is employed? That is correct. Okay. Um, is she attending um, family therapy? She is. Um, is she otherwise cooperative with the department? Um, she is. I sometimes I do have a, a little time of trying to get with her, but she will let me know that you know she, she's having phone issues or she don't have any minutes or anything. Have you spoken with any um, of the staff at uh, the Dalton facility? Um, I've only spoken to um, the person who actually called, which was yesterday. I got a chance to actually talk to Bryson. And so that person from that facility sent me an email and saying that they had him and that I could speak with him um, via phone. OK, um, the you, you called it an accident. Um, you said he was penetrated by another person at the facility. Um, is that being investigated? Yes, it is. 
um, is that in house or is that um, investigated by law enforcement by DJJ or do you know um, what it was a report that was, was being made? Yeah, it was a, it was a report that was being made as well as DJJ um, is investigating the whole situation. Um, but to be clear, is that that incident was uh, the reason that Bryson was moved? That is correct. And okay. Bryson was the victim of that incident, correct? He, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. He was. Okay. All right. Um, that's that's all I have for questions. Ms. Schrock. Yes, sir. Um, prior to Bryson being moved um, to the Dalton facility, I know you and I had communicated and made efforts to facilitate contacts between Blake and Bryson, whether it be phone calls or emails or things of that nature. Um, Prior, and I know that that has been impacted by um, Bryson's recent move, but prior to his move, um, were they able to maintain some contact with him through phone calls or any kind of virtual calls? I think that what they had was through writing. Um, I had a very hard time, a difficult time with the RYDC trying to get them to be consistent and to allow Bryson to use virtual um, or a phone call, a conversation to speak with Blake. I constantly kept them in an a email thread. Um, we're trying to make sure that they kept that connection as much as possible. Yes, I, I, I recall you making a lot of diligent efforts on that. Now that he's moved to Dalton, um, will you, will the department request that the Dalton facility um, make, you know, um, arrangements for Bryson to maintain contact with Blake? Yes, ma'am. That That is the goal. Hopefully we can get some virtual visits, phone calls, as well as letters, whatever would help to keep that connection. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Nothing further. Anything in redirect, <laughs> Ms. Stroberman? Just a couple of things. Ms. Lampkin, so uh, the case plan as such for either is not complete. You said that, is that correct? That is correct. And the therapy has to continue uh, individual as well as uh, family until the therapist feels comfortable or says that they're they're substantially completed all that. Is that what the department's looking for? Yes, sir. It is. Okay. That's all I've got, Judge. All right. Um, did anybody have any questions for Ms. Wanda Cavender? No, sir. No, Judge. No, Judge. I don't know. I don't have anything. All right. Anybody have any questions for Ms. Fallon? No, sir. No, or Judge. Mr. Phillips. Um, Ms. Fallon, is there, is there anything that you need to tell the court concerning your boys? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm just very concerned because Bryson was removed two days ago for the, um, definitely, I'm sure it wasn't an accidental operation. Um, I'm very concerned about that. I'm concerned um, about the accusations that were made um, and that if we need to have more solid, something solid to go on, we, you know, and, and be more serious about this and not just write it off like it's nothing because he is a victim. And this is his second victimization through since he's been a defects this is his first one this time but his last one was at his last time with defects when he was eight years old and now here we are i mean it's just such a serious thing um and then there could be more to the story and we need to unveil that part of the story um and you know definitely not sweep, sweep it under the rug yep and for sure i want to just make the statement that uh, i love my children and will always stand by them and will do everything that i can ever do to be the best mother that i can be i made mistakes in my past but i've come very far to get out of that hole that i was in for them and um I would never do anything or allow anything that would hurt them. And that's it. Nobody had any questions for Ms. Fallon or Mr. Phillips? Judge, I, I just like to verify some things. Uh, Ms. Fallon, you said that you and Mr. Phillips are together. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And you realize being together that uh, he has to participate as well as you in all the therapy, et cetera. Is that correct? Um, yes, I'm under the, he's under, we're under the, under, he'll do anything that we absolutely have to do. I mean, it's pretty simple these days. It's just Zoom and phones. But the only thing he has is just got contact with the, uh, his drug therapy, I believe it is, or uh, something like that. And he's done the one class, the one thing she needed, and he's on schedule to continue on with that. 
Okay. Uh, so, do you need to be I'll, in advanced I'll, therapy now? Because I'll, we weren't I'll, I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I apologize. I just didn't know if he needed to be can be in the family therapy and parenting classes now, like me and Wanda are, um, because we weren't notified if he needed to or not. But he does. But and I'll ask uh, Mr. Phillips, since you're on, you do understand that you have to participate in this and you will uh, participate, work with a the therapist when they call, et cetera. Is that correct? Yes, sir. I, there was just an issue where my phone was off for three days, but it's, it, I'm, I'm, it's back. It's back working. OK, so you will answer the phone calls, participate, go to therapy, et cetera, whatever they ask for. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. OK. Thank you, Judge. That's all I have. All right. As far as the findings, the court needs to make it a review. Uh, the children remain dependent. The, um, the agency is making reasonable efforts to facilitate permanency. It has not been achieved, uh, both adoptive and uh, biological parents are making progress on their respective case plans. They have not completed them. Uh, reunification can't take place physically at this time because of the uh, mental health issues for both children and um, and, the, and the parents not having completed their portions of the case plans. Um, does anyone contend there are any legally required services that aren't being afforded the parents, the placements, or the children? No, Judge. No, sir. No, Your Honor. No, sir. Does anybody contend there's any material portion of the case plans that has not been implemented by the agency? No, no sir. Judge. No, sir. Right. The court finds there are none and there are no legally required services not being provided. The court finds that the existing case plans still remain in the best interest of the children. Um, visitation between the siblings is not where it needs to be. And we've talked about that before. And uh, it sounds to me like Ms. Lemkin's done, um, appears to be making diligent effort to make that happen, but is not getting the cooperation of DJJ. And it doesn't help when he's having to move, which I, just, I think I understand why he had to move to another facility after the unfortunate event. But um, we still need to work on that. And it sounds like the family is getting um, regular appropriate contact with the children um, and that needs to continue um, Bryson is um, over 14 did you tell me I don't remember uh, any specific information about independent living uh, Ms. Lampkin what are you uh, providing for the, the one child that is eligible for those services Bryson well, Brayson being in um in RYDC, um, he has not been able to do um he can't the, do the, the group, he can't do the group seminars that they do. Is there any individualized um service that you can tailor to his limitations in terms of his uh, restricted placement? Um, yes, sir. I will reach out um and speak with them there at Dalton to see if that they will allow him to actually participate to with the virtual. Um, IOP sessions, and if they have anything that they can offer to him as well. Okay. Yeah. I'm right. not sure if the, um, as far as the IOP services, I thought the Department of Juvenile Justice also offers such services. Is there some way that the department and uh, I, think I think she said in a roundabout way she was talking to them to see if they were already giving having anything in their facility since he just moved and if they have those classes to let him access them that they, they don't need to do it twice but um i i have don't recall when i've not that i've had a lot of kids have to sit this long in the rydc um i think they'd be more likely to have a, an organized program at the ydc's uh and I'm not sure, does anybody know if he's staying at a RYDC this long because they don't have a placement for him? And so they're housing him. He needs secure treatment, secure confinement. So they're just keeping him there because they don't have another facility or a more therapeutic setting that he's either doesn't have bed well, space. Ma'am? Well, from speaking with, from speaking with DJJ, they uh, was trying to get him to Augusta because they have a, a, a mental um, they have a facility. Mental unit. Yes, sir. And so that's what um, they are trying to get him there, in which he is on the waiting list to um, to go there to the um, the YDC there in Augusta. 
but he's going to spend his assigned uh, committed time sitting in a, a routine detention facility, not getting the help before he ever gets over to Augusta because his time is running. Yes, sir. And that, that is the conversation I have had with DJJ. If he needs to be, be I, I haven't been recently and um, okay and, and judge from the department standpoint I know Miss and Miss Schrock said that Miss Lampkin is doing her best to get something done for the children and one of those things is I think we submitted an order for a forensic to be done uh, even though we've got custody to, that they needed something and I don't know if DJJ has asked for that because of the forensic that's needed uh, but we certainly, I think we submitted an order for the court to sign so he, we can have a forensic done since he's in DJJ custody or care, I guess is a good way to put it, in our custody. When did you submit an order? I think she did it last end of last week. But Kathy, do you know when that order was submitted? Uh, that order will be brought over with a wet signature in the morning when I come to court. That's right. Patty said she couldn't take it without something uh, something asking. And basically, it couldn't be faxed over to you. We had to have a signature on it, which we have for you to sign. Okay. I was going to say it's not in the file, so I don't know. Okay. Yep. That's, that's, one, of the file. that's one of the <laughs> things. We the attorneys, I, I think you had asked us about whether or not we objected. I don't believe there was any objection from any of us. That's correct. Yeah. So we'll bring it over in the morning, Judge, if that's okay. Sure, but everybody's already seen it. I mean, because otherwise I'm going to tell the yes. court to circulate it. Yes. Yeah, it's missing. I, I know I've seen it, and I think all the attorneys were copied on, and like Ms. Battle said, no one objected. Yeah, Ms. Whaley sent it to all the attorneys. All right. All right, thank all of y'all for your time. Uh, I don't know what happened to that lady. That, um, and then the lady, when I was kidding about I had too many people on here, she took me up on it apparently and left and never <laughs> came back. Yes, that's, that, was, that's, that was DJJ that was on. Oh, I don't blame DJJ if they wanted to get off. That's good. Well, we, she might have been able to answer some of these questions. That's exactly it. I think that's never mind. I'm not going to say what I started to say. I apologize, Judge. <sighs> but didn't everybody know I was kidding? I did, but I don't know if she did or not. That's why I kiddingly said we, all the attorneys would get off. I think we all understood that, but she may not have. All right. Y'all take care. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Judge. Thank you. Oh, hold on just a second. Yes. Hold on just a second. Um, I think it was Blake that hollered out and I told him, don't interrupt. Was there something you needed to tell me or ask? I, w I was wondering if, my, you know how y'all said my, about my brother? I was wondering if I can go visit him at, the, at his RYGC. No, I don't think so. Uh, I'll have Miss um, I'll have Miss Lampkin ask them, but um, they, they live at when parents can go see their kids. So getting brothers to see brothers, I don't think they'll do, but she'll ask. But, um, okay. okay. I just, I would just like to see them be able to get, they, and I don't understand why. Well, I, <laughs> they, long story short, DJJ says they don't have enough people to sit and hold people's hands while they get on Zoom. So they may not even let you do Zoom with them, but I, I would hope they at least let you have a phone call with your brother. Ms. Lampkin will be talking to them further. She's asked them about it and she doesn't sounds to me like she doesn't get a straight answer from them. And uh, unfortunately they don't have anybody to say one way or the other that's here. But she'll keep trying that's, okay? And uh, unfortunately yes, Megan, I think we have to go through DJJ as well. You do? Yep. Ma'am? Oh yeah. Uh, Robin insists that I give you all a six month date to come back so you'll know in advance. November 12th at three o'clock, you want to come live or you want to come Zoom? I guess Zoom until we find out to make sure we can get the, if Bryson's out by the end, hopefully he is. I don't know what his commitment is. I'm just going to put Zoom. All right. All of y'all have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Know, November 12th at three o'clock. Good. Thank you. Take care. Too.